Hello, Rainbow Readers. Today we are reading a story titled The Floating Field How a Group of Thai Boys Built Their Own Soccer Field. The story was written by Scott Riley. We start our story with a quote. It says, What's most important is that anything is possible. And as a community or team, you can overcome incredibly impossible odds. Quote, the quote was written by, I'm sorry, was said by Presit Hemim, founding member of the Panin Football Club. In Koh Panin, Thailand, in 1986, Presit Hemin lived in a village on stilts. Presit woke early morning before school to help his father. Together, they loaded the long boat with nets while his mother brewed coffee and sliced jackfruit in the kitchen. Like many villagers, Presit's father spent his days fishing for groupers and prawns. He spent his nights tying nets and dreaming of the next day's catch. But Prasit dreamed of things other than fish. And last night, the moon had been full. Prasit's father revved the boat's motor and headed out to sea. Prasit waved, then raced along the raised walkways to the uncle's coffee shop. The others were already there. Uncle welcomed Prasit and his friends with plates of fried dough. Between sugary bites, the boys made important decisions. Who will carry the poles? Who's on which team? Who gets to kick off first? Above them, the full moon had set and the sun was rising. Below them, the tides were already shifting. The moment school ended, the boys rushed to the pier. The tide was finally out and a sandbar glistened in the distance. The boys jumped into a boat and paddled fur furiously. Prisit and his friends planted the poles and got into position. With the ball in play, they dug in their toes and chased it across hard packing ripples of sand. They weaved in between other players to get open. And when they got close, they took a shot. Goal! Back and forth, the boys played as longboats returned from the sea, full of fathers and fish. Waves soon crept in. The field narrowed. In minutes, the sandbar disappeared, and the game was over. Prasit and his friends drifted back to the pier, their laughter echoing off the cliff. With the sandbar gone, the boys could only dream about playing until the tides were low enough once more. But this month, the boys could still watch the game they loved. The World Cup was on, and teams from across the globe were playing in a far-off place called Mexico. At Uncle's Coffee Shop, the boys huddled around the television, the only one on the island. One day, after cheering for a team that came back from behind, someone suggested they form their own team. Everyone agreed. But a real soccer team needed a real field. Prasit looked out where the sandbar lay hidden under the sea. He thought about their floating village built from nothing but wooden planks and metal roofs. We can make our own field, he offered. The boys nodded in agreement. The next day after work, the boys scattered. Some searched for scraps of wood and empty barrels. Others swam out to abandoned fish farms to collect loose styrofoam. At the pier, they stacked materials and began building. Hammers flew, nails bent, boards split. Prasit and his friends had no plan. Somehow, that didn't matter. For days, the boys collected wood from broken boats and old docks. Arms full, they hauled it all back to the pier. Prasit handed planks down to boys in boats. Drifting in the tides, they fixed them to floating barrels and makeshift buoys. Villagers heard what the boys were up to. 
Some walked by, shaking their heads. One even shouted, You're crazy! Look around you! You can't play soccer! Not here! But the boys didn't listen. Sea eagles wheeled overhead as they worked. Barrels and boards formed a platform. Some boys tethered it down below. Others painted the edges. A few began to frame knee-high goalposts. After weeks of work, their floating field was complete. With fishnet goals at each end, it teetered in the waves. No longer needing the moon to tug at the tides, Prisit and his friends headed straight to their field each day after school. Loose boards and bent nails forced fancy footwork. So when the field si- so did the field sidelines. When the ball bounced into the water, the kicker had to follow. With the ball in play, they bounced on their toes and chased it across rickety boards. The ball moved faster now, and the boys raced to keep, keep up. They weaved in between other players to get open. And when they got close, they took a shot. Goal! Villagers still walked by, but they no longer shook their heads. Instead, they stopped to watch. Some even cheered. When news of an upcoming tournament on the mainland reached the island, the boys decided to take a chance and sign up. On the morning of the tournament, Prasit and his friends walked to the pier in their mismatched jerseys and ragtag shorts. Before their longboat pushed off, a group of villagers ran toward them. Some carried baskets, others waved their hands. The boys hadn't seen the only ones planning f- The boys hadn't been the only ones planning for the tournament. Reaching into their baskets, friends and family members pulled out new jerseys, matching shorts, and a pair of cleats for each player. The boys beamed, so did the villagers. The Penine Football Club was born. Later that morning on the mainland, the island boys got into position for their first game, this time on a field of grass. Across from them, opponents bounced on toes, ready to play. Prasit and his team stood flat-footed, nervous. But with the ball in play, the boys remembered what to do. They passed it down the field. They weaved in between each other players to get open and when they got close they took a shot goal by the afternoon after winning several games the Panin football club have reached the semifinals once again Prasit and his team lined up and waited for the referee's whistle as the game began the sky darkened within minutes sheets of rain came pouring down drenching uniforms filling cleats, and flooding the field. The other team adjusted. Prasits did not. At the, ha- ha- <clears throat> excuse me. At the half, the Penin Football Club was down, 2-0. to zero. The boys sat silently on the bench, raindrops pelting their heads. They needed to turn the game around. Prasit looked at his friends, his teammates, He thought about how they played on their floating field. Reaching down, he unlaced his shoes and peeled off his socks. His teammates followed, nodding. Barefoot, they ran back onto the field. Without waterlogged shoes, the boys moved quickly, just like they always had, passing, give and goes, and racing to the goal. The Panin Football Club scored twice. With only minutes to play, Both teams battled for the ball. Finally, a player from the other team trapped it, dribbled down the field, and struck it one more time. The ball sailed into the net just past the goalie's reach. The boys from Ko Panin had lost. But that day, in their very first tournament, the Panin Football Club came in third place. On their way back home, Prasit and his teammates yelled and cheered over the boat's rattling motor. As the boys drifted back to their pier, their laughter echoed off the cliff once again. But this time, 
they didn't have to dream about when they'd play next. They had their floating field where they could play the game they loved whenever they wanted.